Welcome Year 8 to your third lesson following your study of the poem Human Interest. So we're going to introduce you today to how we write about poetry. Now at Elsham High School we use what's called Amity, so A-M-I-T-Y, and each of those letters stands for a different thing, and it helps you to formulate notes which you can then build up to write a full response to a poem. So you're going to need some pen and paper to make notes today, and then we're going to ask you to complete your own version of Amity for the poem Human Interest. Thank you. Okay, so first things first, Amity stands for these five letters. So each letter stands for a different method that you are going to use to explore your poem. So first of all, you need to read your poem through, slowly and carefully, trying to understand the meaning of the poem. In other words, what the poem is about. Okay, so your A is for about. You need to try and work out what is happening. The M in Amity stands for the mood of the poem. Now, when we mean mood, we mean does it make the reader feel happy, sad? Um, does it make you question? Does it feel a bit tense? Also, um, through the poem, as you read, does the mood develop and change? The I in Amity stands for ideas. Um, the things that the poem make you think about and link to perhaps other bigger themes at play. For example, um, things like family or love or relationships or war. Um, the next letter is the letter T, um, and this stands for techniques. So as you read through the poem, what stands out to you? Is it a particular single word that's effective? Um, certain adjective or verb or noun? Is it, in fact, one of those um, magic three that we have on the screen here now, the similes, metaphors and personification? Could it also perhaps be a structural technique, something like repetition um, or certain lines beginning with the same word. So as you read through the poem, you need to be able to highlight and pick out some of the most effective language or structural techniques that the poet has used. And then the why in Amity, finally, to sum up your thoughts on your poem, is your response to the poem. Has it made you question or think about this particular theme or topic differently? Or has it made you feel a certain way? And that will help you to perhaps understand the motivations of the poet um, as you have read the poem. So let's have a look in more detail then about how you could approach each individual letter and step. So let's start with the A for about. Questions that you might ask yourself to kind of tease out some of the meaning in the poem and what is going on are questions like, for instance, who is speaking? Is it first person, third person? Is there a specific narrator? Also, who are they speaking to? Are they talking directly to you, the reader? Or perhaps are they talking to a particular other person or character? Also, where are we? Are we in a certain period of time? Are we in a certain location? Um, when in their lives is this taking place? Does the narrator seem childlike? Are they an adult? Are they perhaps someone who's elderly reflecting on their past? Why do you think the writer has written the poem? You might not have direct initial thoughts on this, but it might all immediately, um, per se, become apparent about why the writer has written it, what they're trying to motivate the reader or the person they're speaking to to do. 
also you begin to think about what type of kind of captured snapshot of human experience they have kind of grabbed in this poem are they trying to teach us perhaps a bigger message at this point but most of what you're trying to do here is working out what the poem is discussing is there a story here through this poem what is going on and you can just make notes on those things which will help you in your introduction to discussing the poem when we look at mood here which is our second step you might need to look either at the poem as a whole and how the mood develops or you can even revisit the structure or the stanzas if it's in chunks in turn look at them as individuals decide perhaps the mood whether it's positive or negative um, of each of those for example is stanza one wistful and kind of um, carefree and then do we move in the second stanza to a more angry mood something that shows resentment in the narrator's voice this would show change so the change in the mood would then display kind of a shift in either time or in the narrator's feelings and motivations that might then be able to tie in to the overall message of this or the theme of the poem so having a look at the mood will help us to gauge how we're meant to react to the words on the page then you might like to look at the poem again as a whole this time and think about any ideas that are apparent you're going to need to reread this poem really slowly perhaps line by line stanza by stanza and think about it as a whole as a picture um, here does perhaps as you read along the poem gradually open up or unfold these bigger thematic ideas to you so for instance if it's a poem about war what side or aspect or bigger theme to do with war is it is it pro-war is it anti-war is it propagandist that sort of thing so it's delving in to the kind of motivations and ideas that might sit behind the poem for techniques you're going to aim to find two to three different techniques or single words that you can pick out as showing you meaning um, again the writer has carefully chosen these words and techniques to craft a kind of picture to create the mood to create an effect on the reader um, it might be that you've spotted a simile that works really particularly effectively it might be a really carefully chosen adjective that uses emotive language it might be that you've spotted some repetition of a single word through the poem which highlights an overall idea you need to be able to find two or three because they will make up the bulk of your swan style paragraphs that you can do to discuss the poem in full and then finally this last stage um, and the reason it's the why at the end is because all of these other steps will help you to understand the poem better and have your own personal response to the poem we're all individuals and we all interpret things in slightly different ways and it might perhaps have made you think about this topic or this um, this kind of theme in a different way has it motivated you as a reader to do or think or feel something different um, to what you did before or perhaps emphasized a feeling that you already had that will then help you to understand the effect on the reader and the perhaps motivations of the poet at the time of writing so let's have a go at relating amity to human interest now the first thing to do is to have a reread of the poem and think about what human interest the poem is about so that's your a from amity I'd like you to pause the video here and jot down your answers under the subheading about 
to the questions on the screen and that will help you to form your notes for this section on the poem. Thank you. Once we've looked at the about section, the next section is the M in Amity for mood. So thinking back to human interest as well, in that first lesson, we collected together some lovely adjectives to describe the mood of the piece. I'd like you to pause the screen again, please, the video again, and revisit each of those stanzas in turn and decide on the mood of each stanza. Pick out a nice adjective to describe it. Think about these questions again on the screen to assist you. You've made some nice notes on the about and on the mood of the poem. So now we need to look at the ideas in human interest. So what are the themes and messages in this poem? What is the writer, the poet, trying to get us to think about some of these topics? Now, I've given you some topics on the screen and I'd like you to reflect on what you think the poet is trying to say about these different things. So you have what is the poet saying about someone's identity? What is the poet trying to communicate about crime and about murder? What does it make us feel about love? this poem and finally what does it tell us about lies and jealousy make sure you write your notes down under the subheading ideas next we have the t in amity which stands for techniques so again looking at the poem human interest specifically i'd like you to pick out three quotations which contain one of the following techniques and explain then the effect that the, either the single word that you've chosen or technique has on the reader this is going to make up the bulk of your response so make sure you pick good solid techniques that you understand you can choose single words that evoke emotional imagery but then you need to be specific about the type of word is it a verb is it an adjective is it a noun is it an adverb um, and make sure for each of the three that you choose that you explain the effect and impact that those techniques or single words have on the reader Finally, the last part of your note taking with regards to this poem is your response to it. So we're all individuals with our own identities. We need to decide how we feel about this poem. What is your response to it? How does it change your ideas about the subject and mood that's presented? You need to be honest. You need to be reflective about what it's made you question or understand better. Think about how effective the poet was or wasn't in making you feel that way. Jot down some notes because next we're going to look at how to turn all these notes for these different sections into your essay response for this week. Now that you've made your notes for each of the Amity sections, what you need to do is think about how you are going to turn those notes that you've gathered together from your knowledge of the last three lessons, including this one, into a full length response. So we use this Amity structuring to gather our thoughts together and then you have everything you need to be able to write a full length response like the one on the right hand side. Now your first paragraph is going to be a combination of the first three letters in Amity. So you will include your thoughts on what the poem is about to show that you understand the poem and what happens in the poem. You will also include any discussion on the mood of the poem and how that's created through the language and effects and whether that changes through the poem. And finally, the ideas and themes within the poem. Now, by combining those three things, you will give a nice overall coherent introduction to the poem, showing that you have a broad and overall understanding of the meaning, the themes and the feelings that you've interpreted through your reading of this poem. 
So that's paragraph one. And it might be quite long because you have all three of those elements included in there. Now, paragraphs two, three and four are where you then include your T because we've done A, M and I and your T is techniques. You need to be doing some language analysis for the bulk of your essay response. So that's why we got you to gather three quotations that show different techniques or single words. And then you use each of those three to write a swan paragraph on those. So paragraph two will be technique number one. Paragraph three will be technique number two. Paragraph four will be technique number three. So your three quotations and you will do full length swans. So your statement, then your quotation, then your explanation of the effect of that quotation on the reader, and then finally what you think the writer's intentions are. So that will go through those techniques through the bulk of your essay. And then the final paragraph, paragraph five, probably going to be shorter than the other paragraphs. It is your conclusion on the poem. So that is you summing up your response to the poem, the impressions it made on you as a reader, how it made you think or feel about some of those big ideas that were contained in there. For example, how it made you feel about this particular narrator's identity, how it made you feel about love or hate or crime, all of those things and how it made you reflect, summing up your impression as a reader following this deeper reading that you've made. And you can include in there as well whether or not you think the poet was particularly effective at portraying that. So now that you've had the structuring given to you, you've made your notes in each of those sections on human interest. Your task for the remainder of this next week is to write a full length essay. It's going to be five paragraphs as detailed just now on human interest, please, turning your Amity notes into a full essay. Your teachers will be able to support you through your meets and potentially any modelling that you might need. Thank you for listening.